is the rarest briar model horse in the world. Kind of. I might be exaggerating a tiny, tiny bit, but he's pretty rare. Being the collector that I am, I have four of them. Obviously. So I wanted to tell you the story of how I achieved four Alborosos because that's honestly a feat in itself in the model horse community. And if you can say that you have four Alborosos, that's a flex. So this is Alvarozo, and Alvarozo is based off of a real-life Andalusian stallion. He was the Briarfest 2008 celebration horse. So he came in a box like this, and you can see the real horse on the back. And so he was sculpted by Bridget Eberl. I don't know that I'm saying that right, but she's a very prolific sculptor who does a really good realistic job of her horses. The actual real-life horse was at Briarfest, and everybody that bought a Briarfest ticket got this horse with their ticket. So there's like 6,000 of him in the world, but what makes him so rare is that Briar decided to break the mold. Smash it into pieces. They cut it into four. I looked into the history of why they broke the Alborozo mold a little bit more. So in the Briar kind of post that was talking about this, they essentially said that they really wanted to do something exciting and collectible and they destroyed the mold after working on the horse for two years, but they destroyed it after Briarfest so they wanted the celebration horse to be ultimately super special. There was a comment on that post saying that the reason they broke the mold was because they were testing a new detailing process of the mold and it wouldn't hold up for a full run of models so they created it to test it and then destroyed it because it wasn't going to last in the long run anyways since then obviously the technology has increased and allowed them to do highly detailed molds on a larger production scale that kind of makes sense there is some other rumors out there I'm not exactly sure what is entirely true uh, but essentially they wanted this horse to be really special which means the 6,000 Alvarozes in the world are the only ones that exist. And so once they get into the hands of people like me and I customize them, there's going to be no Alvarozes left one day. We're gonna have customized them all. And then I'm going to be a millionaire because I have four. So that makes him very sought after in terms of collectability. Last year we saw the peak of this and they were worth like $1,000 each. I did not pay $1,000 for any of these horses, so don't think that I'm a crazy person. Briar sneakily though kept a few copies, like a handful of copies, and have released them as auction models as part of Briarfest. And those are models that they sell for way too much money at their live auction. The last one they did was a glossy buckskin pinto, and that horse sold for $22,000. The one from 2024 sold for $37,500. Yeah, we are certified crazy people. Welcome to my channel. My name is Darren. This is DJB Studios. <laughs> and then a few years ago, they decided to shrink him. So now we have a little guy to go with the big guy. And the cool part about this particular Alborozo stablemate is that this is based off of the $22,000 live auction model. The miniature version, and that is about all that I can afford. <laughs> this all being said, Darren, how did you get four of these if they are $1,000 each? Technically, I am rolling in $4,000 of plastic model horse right now. <laughs> That's not exactly the case. I have four and I'm slightly obsessed. This is possibly my favorite Briar model. I just love the sculpture and I've been dying to customize one of these, but I also don't feel like my abilities have lined up. If it's worth a thousand dollars, I could just sell it and make a thousand dollars or put a bunch of work into it and kind of wreck it. I haven't had the courage to customize him yet. So the first one I got was actually just this one. Looks the same. He is um, actually perfect. He's actually perfect. And it's not that he's perfect just because he's like mine, but he's actually perfect. He has no flaws. He is my show horse. He is the one that you see in the background of my videos on the shelf. I named him Deja Vu. And it's kind of like Deja Vu in here these days. What's happening? There's Alborosos everywhere. <laughs> They're taking over the world. <laughs> I've had him for a very long time. It's been several years now. Back in the day when I started collecting, Briar did treasure hunts. Treasure hunt was where you had to purchase a set of Briars. It was usually three, sometimes four. And it was always kind of the same mold or the same idea, 
and then you would cut out the UPC code off of the box, submit it to Briar, and they would send you a free prize. So I was obsessed with these treasure hunts, and they were back at the like peak of my collecting when I began. So I did the color crazy treasure hunt, and I got the, the stallion that went with that. I also did the weather girl treasure hunt. So that's the three Arabian mares, thunderstorm, partly cloudy, and sunny. And then you submit the UPC codes, and you could get a Rainbow. There's a couple variations of the prize horse that you could get, and I got the translucent rainbow one. So she was kind of rare, and a lot of people wanted her. She was cool. I kept her for a while, but I wanted to trade her for something cool. And then someone offered me this horse. This was quite a few years ago, so like Alvarozo was rare and wanted from the get-go because of what he is, but I wouldn't say that he was like particularly special at the time that I got him. He was worth like $200. That was a lot of money. How could you possibly spend $200 on a plastic horse? Well, we learned that people are willing to spend up to a thousand. So I got him for free. I like to say that because the treasure hunt horse was technically free. Briar shipped it to me. I didn't pay anything. And then I shipped it to someone else and they sent me an Alboroso. So he was free. Girl math, girl math. If I had to like run and grab one Briar out of my whole collection, it would probably be this guy. I'm not exactly sure which one came next. I'm pretty sure it was this one. So this one has a tie on his foot so that I know that he's not deja vu because I I did contemplate like swapping them out, but deja vu is perfect. His dapples are perfect. He looks amazing. He's, he's awesome. This one is like pretty perfect too. So this one I traded for my Briar Horse Otheo Custom. Oscar. If you remember Oscar. Oscar was my trash horse. <laughs> he was a custom that moved around my studio too many times and he was frustrating me and I was threatening to throw him in the garbage on the live stream and then someone was like you should name him Oscar. Oscar from Sesame Street. So I did and then I sold him and it was crazy because the lady gave me money and an Alvarozo. Maybe I'm just winning at life. This was quite some time ago now. I've held on to this horse for way too long and I didn't want another one just for the sake of wanting another one. I wanted another one to customize. Like that is the end goal. That is when you have peaked in your customizing journey. When you customize an Alvarozo, you have won. When you post anything threatening this horse with a saw, throwing this horse on the floor, chucking it out the window, like you are threatening people and they feel inclined to comment very aggressive things about how you should not treat your Alvarozo that way because he is the rarest model horse in the world and there are only 6,000 of him. You're destroying him and now there's only 5,999. It's a hard world out there. I got this guy and I'm not one of those people that held a saw to his head because he's perfect. He has like the smallest hoof rubs and that's it. He's been in the studio watching everyone else be decapitated and he continues to remain as is because I just do not have the heart to customize him. Um, I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with him still because I still just don't have the heart to do it. I just, I feel like it's not fair to the people that really want a nice one. I don't know, I also feel like I could trade him for something cool. So we'll see what his fate is, but he just has been on the shelf for years. Now it's been years. So is it really an investment if it's been years? Not really. Believe me when I said I wanted to sell this thing for a thousand dollars during COVID. That was insane. That was absolutely insane. The third one I got was this one. This was from someone on Instagram and I did unbox this in a different video on my channel. I don't remember her username. She was like super entertaining to message, a very chaotic personality. And she found two of these in her closet and was like, I don't need them. Do you want them? And I was like, Absolutely, I would take both of them. Please sell them to me both. She sold this horse to me back in like COVID times for $200 and he is new in box. See, I told her I will buy both. For whatever reason, lost in translation, she sold the other one to someone else. So I only received one. And I mean, I should be happy, but I wanted two because I'm a hoarder. <laughs> This is Alvaro's in the box, and we can pretend that we're at Briarfest 2008 with our tickets, and this is what we just received at the gate. And we're so excited because Briar broke the mold, and you'll never see another one again!
I can feel it when I hold on to it. I can feel the joy of it all. I like this for collectability's sake, for the history's sake. The hoarder in me has a new box El Barozo. And I only paid $200 for him, so he can stay. Woo! Oh my god. I got all my El Barozos for like $1,000. I got four for $1,000. I'm saving money at this point. Basically, I'm keeping this until I have children, and then I'm giving it to my children. This is what they're getting as a wedding gift. So, and it's gonna be passed down for like eight more generations. And then it's really not worth anything because it's only worth money if you sell it for money. Displaying it in my studio though, isn't he lovely? I love that he's new in box, it's super fun. And also, little history blurb, for whatever reason, someone royally up. Albaronzo. Albaronzo! 6,000 of those said Albaronzo. That is a disgrace to this beautiful creature. So the girl that like sent him to me also sent me this. Albaru, yeah. Oh yeah. But then I tie dyed it to make it better. And the last one is this one. What are you gonna do about it? Absolutely nothing. Just me like actually checking that this is the right horse that I just like disco spun on the table. This is my fourth and final Alborozo. This is a body. He actually is a body and I don't take that lightly because I've had the other one for like three years. So this one is actually damaged. He actually has lots of scratches and I love having him because I can throw him around. I can touch him. I can handle him and I don't feel like I'm going to break him because he's already broken. Can't you see it in his eyes? He's already damaged. He's a damaged soul. So he is going to be customized. Yay. My pride and joy. My collector's item passed down to my children. A repaint custom and a sculptural custom. That is why I had four. That is why I've achieved this life goal. That is why. That's the actual reason why I have four. At this point, it would be hilarious to just keep going and see how many I can get. I only need two for my collection. The rest are supposed to be for customization. Now that I have him, now that I see him, now that I'm like more experienced in painting, I'm honestly kind of just like wanting to rip the hair off rather than just painting him as is. Cause I would like him to stand out as a DJB custom. So if you have something on my wish list and you like an Alborosa, let me know because I might be persuaded. And I mean, you can never have too many because like in my head, I'm like, I need one for my show string, but then I need like five to sell. So do I ever actually really sell the customs that I set out to make to sell? No. I don't even like customize them because I'm too scared to touch them. He is going to meet his demise soon. He's going to meet the hacksaw. I want to paint him to a sturdy buckskin. That's my dream because that's the color I would want on this horse if I had it in real life. That's the story of how I obtained not one, not two, not three, but four Alborosos. Hey, so this is DJB from the future and I'm editing this video a lot later than when I filmed it. So since the filming of it, I actually obtained another Alborozo. What could it be? None other than Alborozo. Don't come at me. Don't hate me. Don't hate the player. Hate the game. Okay. So for a time there, I actually had five copies. So you know those people that like start with a paper clip and then they like trade their way to the top and they essentially end up with a house at the end of it? <laughs> That's basically what I did here. I traded custom work for this mint dark variation Alborozo. I kept him because I didn't have the heart to customize him. I then offered my services to Briar and did a workshop for them. They gave me a volunteer horse in exchange for that work. Somebody really wanted this volunteer horse, offered to trade me an Alborozo. This Alborozo was body quality, so I took the mint dark variation sold it for a cash price, and then used that cash to buy myself a holy grail scallywag. So technically, both these horses were free, traded my way to the top, heckling Alborozos. 
So this is a Body Quality Albarozo. This is also a Body Quality Albarozo. I'm gonna do a buckskin and a whoop. Okay, so I still only have four Albarozos. Don't worry, I did sell the other one. But my intention here is not to hoard this model horse. I'm purely looking for bodies. I don't need mint ones and I will always sell the mint ones to you fellow collectors. Honestly, I'm impressed with myself that I have traded my way up to the top here. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this informative and unique story of how I obtained all of these models. Maybe you learned a little bit of something about Briar history as well. I always thought those collectors were crazy that like bought the same model like 12 times with a different paint job. And now I'm one of those people. Until next time, I will see you in the next one.